the day I was born was the day the world collapsed. Those that survived had to make new lives underground. Up above, there was nothing but ash and cold and death. People thought it would last forever, but without us up there, life returned. I was six years old the first time I saw the sun. Mom and Dad were heartbroken by what they saw. The world they'd known gone forever. But not me. I'd never seen anything so perfect. This is the beginning of Far Cry New Dawn. 17 years earlier, at the end of Far Cry 5, the world was engulfed in nuclear hellfire. While we're never explicitly told who fired first or what caused the war that led to the end of the world, radio broadcasts throughout the game make it fairly clear that it was the ultimate escalation of a long-standing global conflict. The collapse, as it's now known, was a truly global catastrophe, leaving practically every major city and government decimated and the face of the planet permanently scarred from pole to pole. Those scars healed, though, and in a way, few expected. After the initial fallout had dissipated and the harsh nuclear winter thawed, the long storms and shifting Earth resulted in what's now known as a super bloom, resulting in all of the bright, colorful overgrowth that we see across the world. During all this, many people retreated into underground fallout shelters. Those who remained on the surface were forced to migrate to safety, starve, or find another way to survive. Hope County, with its abundance of doomsday preppers and survivalists, began trying to rebuild within just a few years of the blast, though not everyone was as driven to rebuild society. Joseph Seed, perhaps better known as the father, emerged from below ground, vindicated that his end times prophecy was true. He saw beauty in this destruction, a chance for humanity to start anew. Forsaking the technology of the old world, he built himself a new following of hunters and gatherers determined to reshape the world into a new Eden. In California, a group of survivors banded together in a lab dedicated to biofarming and, under the leadership of Thomas Rush, managed to begin the arduous process of resettling and rehabilitating the West Coast. Meanwhile, to the east, things were a little more dire. In one city, a group of dock workers managed to turn their port into a secure community by rationing the supplies from the various shipping containers they found themselves with the most resources, which gave them the power to take control of the city. Life was hard, but they were alive. This is where Mickey and Lou, known more commonly as the twins, grew up, with their father leading the group, eventually mobilizing and leaving the city when their supplies ran low. As they watched the world around them improve, with wildlife and natural resources becoming more plentiful, the twins saw little reason to conserve the resources like they used to. After all, with death so common, they're here for a good time. Their father disagreed though, but that wasn't a problem the twins had an issue solving. Taking control of the group, the twins formed the Highwaymen, as they are today, a ruthless band of survivors that move like a virus across the remnants of the United States, ransacking an area of all of its resources before moving on to their next target, which happens to be Hope County and its verdant, fertile valley. And this is where Far Cry New Dawn begins. The Highwaymen have arrived in Hope County while a train carrying Thomas Rush and his team of scientists, engineers, and security experts plan to liberate and rebuild the once peaceful valley. Of course, the best laid plans often go astray. For more on Far Cry New Dawn, check out what big changes are coming to the franchise this time around or a full co-op session in one of the new Expedition missions. For all your other post-apocalyptic needs, you're already in the right place, IGN.